Hello everyone, my name is Bruno and I'm going to give a brief presentation on the intuition behind self-organizing maps. First, what are they? Self-organizing maps are unsupervised neural networks that cluster high dimensional data. Their architecture typically includes an input layer, a set of weights, and the Cajonan layer. The Cajonan layer is a fully connected layer of neurons that has weights per each input. These weights get trained over time via the difference between their inputs and the weight values. We will discuss how the self-organizing map learns later. An example of self-organizing map in nature is the brain. The brain takes in inputs in the form of senses and maps those inputs onto particular areas. This is exactly what a self-organizing map does after it's trained. One example of an application of self-organizing maps is in natural language processing. In this example, a group of researchers took 2 million medical papers and pre-processed the text. They then fed this text into a self-organizing map with 75,000 neurons. One thing to note is that this quantity of information with this many neurons will require a GPU to train in many, many days. Anyway, the final production was this graphic containing clusters of similar meaning words. In the bottom right, the words are related to brains, and in the top right, the wor words are related to medical imaging, and so on. The training process can be simplified into five steps. First, you initialize the neural network with random weights, and then randomly select an input, and then you select the winning neuron using the Euclidean distance. There are other distance metrics, but the Euclidean distance is a simple one, and we can use this equation here to calculate it. We will calculate the Euclidean distance for each neuron. The first neuron had 23.5, the second is 15.2, and the third is 31.6. We will decide the, what the winning neuron is by picking the one with the smallest Euclidean distance, and that will be neuron 2. We have a winner. Now we'll use this weight update equation to update the weights of every neuron in our Cajonan layer. All right, let's break down this weight update formula. This first variable is a learning rate. It depends on the epoch and a couple of hyperparameters. In this implementation, the learning rate changes. All right, let's break down the weight update formula. The first variable, eta, is a learning rate. Here, the learning rate depends on the epoch and a couple of hyperparameters. As the epoch grows, the learning rate will decrease, and the effect of this is that, the, is that over time, the weights will update less and converge on a value. The second, variable, the second variable is a topological neighborhood. It depends on the distance between neurons, the capital S, and also the neighborhood size, the sigma variable. The capital S is the lateral distance between neurons, and it is the Euclidean distance between neurons. The neighborhood size is a very similar equation to the learning rate, and it has a similar impact. It depends on hyperparameters and the epoch. It also converges to a value over time. In order to understand how self-organizing maps function, it's important to answer the question, how does dimensionality reduction occur? This is entirely dependent on the distance between neurons, as we can use these distances to map them onto a two-dimensional plane, like so. You can try this out yourself and choose a set of dots and distances and arrange them onto a grid, and you'll see that they'll conform to a limited number of ways. When you have many neurons with many distances between them, they will conform to a small set number of ways. Okay, I hope you've developed a good intuition on how self-organizing maps work. In this Jupyter Notebook example, we'll import the Minisom library, which is a minimalistic implementation of self-organizing maps, though it works quite well. We will also import the breast cancer dataset from sklearn and do some clustering analysis to cluster malignant and non-malignant breast cancer, and we'll use the labels given from the data set to see how well our clusters will be. We will also set our hyperparameters, 
These hyperparameters I tune manually, but in a future video we'll learn how to tune self-organizing map hyperparameters. A couple of things to note here is that the sigma and the learning rate variables that we saw in the presentation are used as constants here. And there are more complicated implementations of Minisum, but we will just focus on the simple implementation for now. We then load our data from sklearn and initialize our self-organizing map using the hyperparameters that we set. So let's start running things. Okay, now that we've initialized our self-organizing map, we will start training. Training took about three seconds. Now we'll use this code here to visualize our map. And there we go. We get a good clustering there, with the green being the non-malignant tumors and the red being the malignant tumors. I hope this example has shown how easy it can be to implement a self-organizing map, and I hope the presentation has given you a good intuition on what they are and how they learn. I'll see you next time for another video on self-organizing maps. Until then, bye.